Okay, so you've realized that your marriage has become, well, it's become the roommate situation, what I like to call the roommate syndrome. So what do we do next and how do we turn it around? Welcome back friends, glad you're here today. And today I'm gonna to be talking about the roommate syndrome, but better yet, what we can do to remedy the situation. And I know that you're probably thinking, you know, hey, it's been a while, it's been a long time. Um, I'm almost scared, I'm kind of stressed, you know, about starting this communication with my spouse. I don't really know where to begin. Um, and, you know, I realized that I've kind of been kicking the can down the road. And so we got to figure out about communication. We got to open up the lines of conversation. And there are certain ways that we can do that. You may have some fear around this, and this is normal. Okay, it's normal to have some fear. It's normal to worry how the other person's going to react. But let's start off easy, okay? We're going to start off easy, but we're going to make some great strides. Most of us are living based on certain constructs and programs that we've created for ourselves, right? And some of these programs can be detrimental, but these programs are comfortable, okay? And recently, with all the changes in our world, okay, with COVID and all the changes that that's brought to our lives, those programs can seem very comfortable right now, right? We can feel very at ease with them, but it might not be helping us. And so many of us are living and working at home, some of us are living and working at home and our spouse is living and working at home, right? Uh, some of us are out of work and, and we're going through a real stressful time of trying to figure that out. And some of our work schedules have gotten even more intense that you're even more overwhelmed, even more stressed out at the end of the day, which can also kind of, you know, put us back into this program even more deeply. And so many of us come home, if, we're, if we are working outside the house, we put on the TV, right? We turn on the TV, we pour a drink, we pour a glass of wine, we have a cigarette or maybe smoke some weed, whatever it is that you usually do. And that's a constant, right? It's like right, right when you get home, boom, or right when you close the computer, it's like, I got to have a drink, okay? Whatever it is, your go-to. And so that's part of the program. We need to realize, first off, if we want to make changes in our marriage, we have to change our program. Okay, and we can't try to fixate on figuring out how to change their program. We got to change ours first. We want to first identify our nightly program. Okay, because we have to realize that the program is not aiding and abetting on our communication and it's surely not helping us in the romance department. Right. So we got to stop and break this program and cycle. Okay, so ways to begin to do that is identifying your program. Okay, if you come home immediately and pour a drink and put on the TV and it's blaring, we've got to break that cycle. Okay, we got to change this because I want to ask you, are you talking to your spouse? Are you listening to your spouse? I mean, you might be talking, but are you listening? Are you interacting with your spouse? And I mean, honest, mindful interaction. I'm not talking about going through the motions. You know, many of us, we're, we're still on the computer, you have a drink in one hand, you're reading an email, the TV's blaring, your spouse is, oh yeah, okay, honey, okay. We're not paying any attention. And so first off, let's talk about changing those patterns, okay? If you come home and you're turning the TV on or you leave your office and you, you, know, you, you close up your computer and you go turn the TV on, stop that. Don't turn the TV on. Change it up, okay? Turning on some relaxing music, uh, maybe some, you know, nice, relaxing, maybe type symphony music or something, you know, Spanish guitar or something like that that's really nice and beautiful and soothing. Not too loud, okay, because we're trying to create an ambiance where we feel comfortable to talk, right? We don't want to yell, we want to talk. And so that in itself changes up the dynamic because what the TV does is it does one thing very well. It shuts people up, okay? Right when that TV goes on, shuts everybody up because they can't talk over it, right? And if somebody talks over it, shh, come on. So it's totally a divider in the room, right? And also TV takes us out of living our life, right? It puts us on the sidelines of our life and it has us watching someone else, I guess, living their life. I don't know. But usually it also causes us stress and anxiety as well if we're focusing on any sort of news type media, okay? So we really need to focus on this, putting on some ambiotic music, some really nice stuff that'll actually help to calm the room, but to also open it up for a conversation. And the second thing is that many of us are cooking from home, right? We're cooking from home. Uh, we're making dinner at home. Let's not make it a chore. 
okay? I want the martyr part of the program to go away. So if you're the, oh, I'm constantly slaving here, making this food, we've got to end that part of the cycle program in your brain, okay? Because nobody wants to hear about how the martyr is having to cook. Also, if you're not acting like the martyr, but you see it as a chore, then the process of making food and eating will be a chore. Okay, and everybody's going to feel like this is something we got to get over, get through, get done with, hurry up, do this, do that, wash everything up, and, and then do our own thing. Let's, let's exit from that program, okay? So what we want to do to exit that program is we want to get our spouse involved, right? And maybe they don't like to cook, but we want to get them involved. We want to have them in the kitchen, hanging out, talking, starting communication, having a conversation, almost as if you had other people at the house having a dinner party. You know how you are when you have a dinner party with other people. You're, you're talkative, it's festive, you have music on, the lights are nice. You probably have a little bit of wine out and sharing it and having conversations and everybody's standing in the kitchen talking. Why can't we recreate that with just you two? Okay, it's not hard to create the ambience. You just got to actually put the effort in and see the value of doing it with just you two. The third thing that I advise you to do is to actually take time to hug your spouse. Okay, I know, I said hug. I didn't say kiss, I said hug. We have to begin somewhere. Okay, we gotta start this off slow. We have to begin with physical touch. And one of the safest physical touch is a hug. Now, I don't want this half, half rushed hug. I don't want the side hug. I don't want the one boob hug. I want the full hug, right? We got to have the full thing. So you and your spouse, man, woman, whoever it is, you need to both actually hug and hold each other. And I advise at least 45 seconds. Okay. I know that sounds weird. Why am I, why am I hugging for 45 seconds? Because we're trying to remind the muscle memory and we're trying to connect back with how it feels to you to actually touch your spouse and to be touched by your spouse in a safe way, okay? The last thing you wanna do is grab them and try to, uh, you know, do, I mean, no. We, want, we gotta start, we gotta start off in a good, safe environment, a good, safe way that everybody feels comfortable, okay, in at least 45 seconds. And I know that might be tough, but challenge yourself to that. And also let your spouse know, hey, I'm trying something new. Uh, I saw this on a video or just say, hey, let's hug for like 45 seconds, okay? See what happens, okay? It, it go as far as you can, um, but just try it out and see how it feels after that hug. Okay, the next thing that I advise, and this might seem very simplistic and simple, but some of the simplest things are some of the most powerful things, right? Okay, suggestion. When you arrive home or when you leave your home office, I want you to go directly to the bathroom. Do not pass go, do not collect $200, do not go into the kitchen, do not hug your spouse. I want you to floss your teeth and brush your teeth. And I'm talking about a solid two minute brush, guys. Okay, that's what you're supposed to do. Not this 30 second thing, okay? A minute and a half to two minutes is perfect, but I want you to floss first, okay? And then I want you to brush and I want you to use toothpaste. <laughs> It's amazing what happens when you have minty, fresh breath, right? Because when you go in for the hug later on, they're going to be like, oh, wow, because you smell good. You smell like a mint. It's nice, right? The opposite, not so nice. And the thing about bad breath is that's going down the line when you try to tell somebody that they had bad breath. You need to tell them, you want to tell them, but that's almost like as bad as calling someone out about sexual performance. It does not go well. Okay, it puts a rift in the room. There's anger and resentment. Oh, now you're saying I have bad breath. You see what, we don't wanna start there. We wanna avoid that. So let's do that. The other thing about it is you don't have to say anything to your spouse about it, but usually they'll get the hint, okay? So when you come in with the minty breath, if they don't have it, it might not happen for the first few times, but they'll get into that rhythm as well because they're gonna realize, you know what, maybe I need to brush my teeth. You don't have to say anything usually, but you might have to repeat this process over and over again because they're gonna realize that there's something that they need to be doing. The next thing that I wanna remind you of, because I think some of us have gotten really casual, okay? Too casual, not cool casual. <laughs> Don't wear PJs, okay? You might have some sexy PJs, okay, that's different, but most PJs are not attractive. Sweatpants, not that great. 
okay? So we really need to start presenting ourselves. Even if we aren't leaving the house because we're having to work and all that stuff, we really need to present ourselves in a different way. We're gonna feel better about ourselves. And you know what? We're gonna be, well, more interesting to look at. And I'm not saying that looks are everything and I'm definitely not saying that clothes are everything. Please don't think that that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying if we're wanting to kind of, you know, connect with the romantic side and eliminate this roommate situation, we got to do some things to get there. Okay. And the first thing is that the, the team building shirt from 2015 that you've been wearing from company is probably not something that's going to do it, right? Those old sweatpants with some holes in them and those mixed match socks, probably not going to do it. So we really need to think about that. You don't have to be dressing provocatively, but just something that you feel good in and maybe something that you feel like you look good in. That's important because that'll go a long way to the way that you present yourself to your spouse and also your self-esteem. The second piece of advice is that we need to start actually listening to our spouse. I know it's a novel thought. Okay. And it's a novel approach. We actually have to begin to listen to them. We need to start listening to them. Like how we listen to our friends. You see what I'm saying? I mean, Many of us listen to our friends drone on and on about anything, anything. It could have been something you heard for the seventh time from them. Okay. But you're like, wow. Okay. How do you feel about that? Are you okay? You know, what are you going to do about that? But when it comes to our spouse, we're like either trying to quickly solve it for them and tell them our, oh, oh wait, no, you're all wrong. Or we're trying to rush them, right? Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I got to watch this show or, Hey, Hey, I got to take this call or well, get to the point. I mean, what are you trying to say to me? Which is very irritating. Okay. It's very irritating because when you try to rush somebody in their speech, it stresses them out and then it gets them confused and then they forget to what they were saying and then they just get angry. Okay. We're not, not what we want here. We're wanting to be heard and we need to show the respect to them so that they begin to listen to us. Right. Cause I'm not saying that you're doing everything wrong at all. I'm sure this is played on both sides, but if we don't begin listening and actually paying attention like we do to our friends, how do we expect them to do it? And if we do it over a period of time and they don't reciprocate, then we are able to actually talk about it. You see what I'm saying? Because we got to do something consistently for a period of time to actually be doing it ourselves. We can't just listen one night and then the next night call at our spouse and say, you didn't listen to me. I've been listening to you for all this time. You've been listening to them for one day. Okay. We've got to do this over a period of time because if they don't change their ways, you can have a conversation with them and just say, Hey, you know what? I've, I've been listening to you. I've been communicating. I've been hearing you, but you're not showing me the same respect, but we can't throw that out there until we've actually done it for a period of time. The next thing that I want to discuss is that we have to realize that we have to begin somewhere. These concepts that I'm talking about is the building block to begin the communication, to change and pivot the relationship. Okay. We might not get back to when it was new, but we're trying to basically turn the ship around. Okay. It took probably years to get here. So we're not going to be able to turn it around overnight. But if you begin to do these small things, we can make major incremental changes that is going to eventually make a big change in your relationship. I want you to be aware of one thing before I give my last tip is that I want you to be aware of falling back into these patterns. Okay. These patterns that we've created have created these walls. Okay. These walls between us and our spouse. Okay. And so if we don't try and actually make change and do the best we can, we're going to regret it later. Okay. Cause every relationship ebbs and flows and every relationship goes from new to not new. And so we actually have to grow and augment ourselves and also not fall trap into being bored, not listening, not being a part of it. And last but not least, we must reestablish the connection again in this relationship, right? It's so important. Each piece of this puzzle is important. Once we open the line of communication, right? Once we start opening it, we'll be able to talk about some of the big issues, right? About our feelings, about our hopes and dreams, right? Because those are the things that we talked about when the relationship was new, right? We talked about what we wanted to do in our life and where we wanted to go and, and all these great things. It doesn't matter how old or how young we are. And we can also talk about opening up the communication about having a romantic or sexual life again. 
okay? Because these are hard things to tackle when we don't feel heard. These are hard things to tackle when we're not doing the other work right? When we're just ignoring each other or turning the TV on or just drinking or whatever and really not even paying attention to that person. It's almost like, ah, eh, you know, I, I don't know. So we really need to focus on this. And so if you can build from this, start doing these day after day. And I know it might be difficult sometimes because we might want to fall back into the program. But if you can build upon this, I'm telling you, I believe that your spouse will also begin to see that something's changing within you. And they might start giving more of themselves. Now, if you see that that's not happening over a good period of time, then that's time when we need to open up the line of communication and have that discussion about, hey, I've, I've been working pretty hard on this relationship. I've been putting my, you know, my best foot forward. I've been trying to change my programs and, you know, letting go of this, this and that. You know, can we talk about how we can integrate that and work together on this? Because this relationship is important for me and I want to make it the best relation possible. You know, I want to make it the best and I want to try to, you know, resurrect it so that we can really find that common ground and really grow together, right? Instead of putting the walls up and just kind of going through the motions. So I hope this video has helped you. If you don't know if you're in the roommate situation, I have a previous video here on my YouTube channel. I'm gonna put the link in the description. You can find that, you can click on that, and make sure that you are in the roommate syndrome and the roommate situation, make sure that's the case. And if you are, I hope these tips will help you. And if you can be consistent and build upon them, they will create consistency and they will actually begin to change the nightly program with you and your spouse. It won't be the same program anymore more, it'll be this real positive program where you're actually trying to, well, make the relationship even better. Uh, in the comments section below, if you have um, a tip that's really worked to bring back the communication um, or the romance in your relationship, please add that to the comment section as well. We'll be doing some new content on this as well to continue this conversation because it's a very important conversation and you wouldn't be watching this video if you didn't think that your marriage or your significant other's relationship was important to try to keep and to make better. I hope this video has helped you. Please share it with your family and friends. Don't forget to like the video, please. If you do like it, subscribe to the channel. We have a new option on this page where you can become a member. So if you wanna learn more information about that, click on that join button uh, and find out more about it. And love to have you as a member on the page. The content will stay the same here, but there'll be extra content uh, in the membership that's exclusive to membership. Okay, don't forget to live your true life.